Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. I see there's still people joining, so we're going to give them about 30 more seconds before we officially get started. So just hang tight and we will be back with you in less than a minute here. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully that's enough time for everyone to have joined us. Um, if not, then um, of course we record all these webinars, so uh, we will make sure that it is recorded and posted for everyone to view. Um, my name is Jenna. I'm with Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies in cool places. Uh, today I'm being joined by Jackson from Mara Siena. Unfortunately, we cannot get his camera to work, so you're just going to have to um, imagine that you're seeing his face over there. You can see at least the picture up on your screen. Um, so Jackson's here with me today. Before I hand things over to him so that he can introduce to you the new camp, I'm going to just take a quick minute to introduce our Emerging Destinations portfolio. So if this is the first time joining an Emerging Destinations webinar, then welcome. Um, if not, then hopefully you're already familiar with our portfolio. So we have quite an extensive um, portfolio. We have uh, African region, I, the Americas, and then a small Europe as well. Uh, since we're talking about uh, Mara Siena Camp in Kenya today, I'm just going to take a quick minute to introduce uh, the African portion of our program. So starting in the top left-hand corner there, we have Adventure Consult. They are DMC in Uganda and Rwanda. We have Anantara Bazaruto Island Resort, located um, on Bazaruto Island in Mozambique, just off the coast of Mozambique. Um, Atua Enka, um, which has five boutique uh, properties across Kenya. Avani Victoria Falls Resort, I think the name says it all there. Uh, Crown Plaza, which is Nairobi Airport Hotel. Uh, Eco Training, which has five different camps, um, four different camps rather, in um, South Africa, uh, one in Botswana and one in Kenya. Um, JW Marriott, located in the Maasai Mara, um, Mara Siena, which I won't say too much about because we're going to be hearing about that today from Jackson. Um, Sierra Leone, we are representing the destination of Sierra Leone and Top Guides Bush Camps, as well as uh, three, four different properties in Tanzania. And last but not least, we also have the Royal Living Sins that is located again on um, Victoria Falls on the Zambia side. So if you have any questions about any of those, I know that I just went through a lot in a very brief um, amount of time, but if you have any questions about any of those clients that you see up there on our screen, you can see my email address there as well. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions or give you a one-on-one -on -one personal training. And if you want to learn more about any of those, just uh, let me know. Um, now, before I hand things over officially to Jackson, I am going to just give a couple housekeeping notes. So this webinar will be recorded. All of our previously recorded webinars can be found on our Emerging Destinations YouTube channel and our Emerging Destinations website. So if you do um, want to check in on any of those that you've missed, uh, you can do so there. Again, also, if you have to leave this webinar a little bit early today, if you get a phone call, anything else happens, etc., cetera, um, I will be sending out the recording to everybody in our webinar follow-up later this week. And again, you can also find them on our website and our YouTube channel. Um, last but not least, uh, Jackson is joining us live today, so um, it's 8 p.m. for him, so thank you, Jackson, for taking time out of your evening to join us. So he will also stick around at the end of his presentation to answer any questions that you have. So I would encourage everyone to please participate as well. Uh, you can do so by typing your questions through on the go to webinar control panel, and then I will ask Jackson those questions at the end of his presentation. So please feel free to type those through if they come up during his presentation or again afterwards. Um, we'll try to get to as many as possible since we have him here live. So I think that's all I have, Jackson. I am going to officially hand things over to you so you can introduce uh, for the first time ever uh, the Marciana camp to the travel trade. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Jenna. Um, uh, good evening, everyone from Kenya. Uh, as you have heard, my name is Jackson Loseya. Um, I am the marketing director of uh, Mara Siena Camp, as well as I am a professional safari guide. Um, I've got about 35 years of experience in the bush, 
uh, also a trainer of guides and uh, very well traveled to most of the destinations that um, we ask uh, um, guests to arrive to Kenya on safari making. Um, as you have heard that uh, I am uh, director of Siena. Um, Mara Siena is located in Ripoi Conservancy. Ripoi is um, very much attached to the Maasai Mara. As you can see where the little dot, uh, little orange dot is, and it extends all the way to the Maasai Mara National Reserve. Um, from uh, Ripoi is only 25 to 30 minutes to Sekinani Gate and uh, 35 minutes to Olalai Mutia Gate on the eastern side and not far off from Sun River either. So we can uh, access Maasai Mara if we need to. However, we are in Ripoi Conservancy and we do not need to go to the game reserve in any time as we, we are very rich with wildlife. We have excellent, excellent wildebeest um, presence inside the point itself. Um, next. Um, this is a newly, absolutely newly started camp. Uh, this uh, uh, new camp, Mara Siena, is eight uh, rooms which two are family tents and uh, six are regular tents which are kings and uh, as well as we have a couple of tents with twin just seems so, so that we can uh, accommodate everybody else especially when it comes to travelers in different groups and different um, could be a son mother or could be friends traveling together so um, we have we are right in the middle of Ripoi itself, and we're surrounded by fantastic open plains. And our mess, which is right there now, is you can see, is friendly, eco-friendly done. We want not to put a lot of um, uh, structures, such as with a lot of cement. We want to be as light-footed as possible, to be as eco-friendly as possible. And our camp is 100% solar. Uh, your heating water is 100% solar, your lights 24 hours is 100% solar. So we would try our best to be as eco-friendly as possible within this fantastic established uh, conservancy, Marari Point. Next. The next slide. As you can see, we, we just get going a little bit on the comfort side um comfortable i just want to stay on this uh, sitting very comfortable really you know if you think of sitting areas looking into the real raw africa this is it you know you're sitting there looking out into the open plains in a very comfortable sofa and overlooking into a beautiful waterhole that is uh, packed packed with giraffe and packed with wildebeest and thompson gazelles and occasionally cheetah and lions and hyena every now and then. We do have a communal dining, as you can see to the right over there. And the communal dining, we, we try as much as we can to accommodate all nationalities and uh, people from all different par part of the world to be friends. We, as uh, Mara Siena, would like to make, make people homely as possible. You know when people come, they want to see me, they want to see Salash, they want to see Fred. These are the two other directors which host together with me as well as they guide. And now when you want to hear stories of real Africa, we've got to be sitting together and we don't want anybody to be marginalized sitting on their own, but on request when somebody has vocations and a group who want to be sitting on their own, to have their own private guide or want to be just having a quiet time, a family time, it is entirely acceptable and is basically doable. Next slide. As you can see, the number of um, giraffes that are there, uh, Mara Ripoi probably hold the record of Kenya number of giraffes that is found in any conservancy. In any given time, I don't think you can go on a, on a game drive without seeing well over 200 giraffes, if not 500, before you end your one day 
When you go everywhere, there's just groups of 50, groups of 30, group of 60. And uh, it is rich wildlife. And the reason why it is that rich, uh, you can see behind the giraffe, there's a lot of acacia. We have different uh, varieties of acacias in this area and different kind of um, trees and, uh, and, and shrubs. And, and therefore, that is the main uh, food for the giraffes. I personally took this picture about two two days ago, and I was just amazed. You know, you stand over there and you see this tower standing, looking at, at you, and, and you can see they are still a little bit looking uh, intense because it is a new conservancy, and a new conservancy means the wildlife are still very attentive. They're very curious. Uh, that's including the lions, including the cheetahs that are there, including the wildebeest. They are fine when you go on foot. They're fine when you 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 ride in any other way, but when you are on in a vehicle, yet they will just be standing and say, "What is this strange creature that's here?" Next slide, please. As you can see, the regular uh, tent over there, um, it is widely out in the open. We want you to feel that you are in Africa. Uh, a lot of times, you know, when travelers arrive, when guests arrive. They feel enclosed. They go into the bushes, they hide them into the bushes. Why hide? We don't. We Maasai people walk in these open plains. We live in these open plains for a good reason. We would like to see home. And this is your home when you come and arrive into Marasiana. You'll be sitting on that veranda, very comfortable uh, chairs, um, and in the room is in incredibly spacious. It's not like a small tent. It is a beautiful tent inside. And uh, the roof, we put the roof so that it's, it's cooler. It's actually very cold most of the time. I would like to let people know that you're not going to be baking because you see in the open, we put a makuti roof, it's like reeds. And those makuti make the, the canvas very cool. And you would not by any chance need um to have uh, a fan or to have a c in fact you probably under a layer because it's that cold next um the activities as you can see here we've got uh, you can see me there doing some walking safaris up here um uh, it's fantastic on walking um since we're not restricted because of the park rules and so on yes we create our own rules for safety purposes we want to make sure that when we walk, when we walk out there, we are walking with somebody safe, with a ranger, and making sure that you know that we do offer walking safaris in this place. It is fantastic, and uh, most so you can walk out in the open. You can walk out with big game. You can walk out on the hills. We have everything. We have really hills way up to six and a half thousand feet, and we have up to five. 5,300, 5,400 feet below. And all of that is packed with wildlife. And we walk with care and we, we assure you that it is for the safety and the comfort of your clients and also the safety of our friends who come and, say, and visit us, that they walk this land like we do, like we have done in thousands of years. Next slide, as I can see that there is a little bit of a sunset and an evening with a cheetah, that is what we, uh, offering as well. We do offer night game drive. So when people uh, listen and hear there is hyena feeding or there is lions hunting out there, we don't need to be coming back because we're not inside a park. We are inside a conservancy. And the rules of the conservancy are different to the rules of the national game reserve or national parks. National parks are regulated to an extent that you have to get out at 6.30 back to your camp so that you can leave the wildlife and the ranchers to patrol and do ABCD. Here, this conservancy is a community conservancy. And there's got a lot of wildlife and it's got freedom. The freedom that we do not abuse, the freedom that we want to follow this wildlife carefully and also respectively so that we don't interfere with them on their normal routine. It's not that when you come over there on a night drive, I'll put a shining light on blinding the wildebeest or any other animal. We do have filters, red filters, spotlights, when we are doing a night drive, 
after dinner or before dinner, we go out and look for those nocturnal species and those nocturnal animals that normally you don't see during the day. We have had some good success so far uh, for the few groups that have already uh, come to Marasiana uh, camp. Next, please. Yeah, now this conservancy is owned by the community. You can see the elders and the number of people that are there. We have women and men who are in this group. This is the formation and the beginning of the conservancy. I was right in the middle of this meeting and the rules of this conservancy is that uh, the community can have passionate grazing and the wildlife can have uh, some certain, certain areas. So we create calls alongside with a meeting of elders and community members to make sure that we do not take the people out completely on the land that is historically theirs. This is the land that we rent and pay a fee to all those members, to 3,000 people in fact. 3,000 are put aside six and a half to up to seven acres per person to create this conservancy. Mara Ripoy Conservancy is one and only intended to be a conservancy by the Maasai people. These men and women have put this land aside that cannot, nobody can live, cannot live inside the conservancy, can graze, but six and a half acres or seven acres is not enough for a family. Therefore, it is intended intentionally, and we feel blessed, absolutely blessed, that we are part of the creation and the vision of our Maasai people and our brothers and sisters. Next. Uh, this conservancy, as we came along, I came in uh, as the first of the investors who ever ventured into Marari Point. And I found quite a lot of depressing stuff, a lot of poaching that's going on. Without the presence of conservationists, people like me who have had long history of conservation, a lot of suffering. That's a, a giraffe that's been uh, poached and you can see the rent is helpless there. And so we have come as the aid and the protectors for the future of our wildlife. Not only we are protecting the wildlife, we are pro also protecting the environment, what the habitat of these animals. You know, if we're not busy doing something, somebody is being busy doing something wrong against our planet. And we feel blessed to be part of the conservancy and to intervene through our presence. You know, I go out personally. I've, I've been there at about four o'clock in the morning five o'clock in the morning in search of just to see what else is there. I have found some very interesting stuff. And some of this poaching uh, is meat poaching, nothing to do with um, um, aggressive, let's say, insecurity problem. This is just people who want to take advantage of our wildlife and the ranges there that you've seen. We work together. We work with Kenya Wildlife Services. We work with our county, uh, our county rangers to make sure that it is, all these persons have been brought and the people who are involved have been brought to camp so that these people can go to court, they can be arrested and snares can be taken out. So our presence in Mararipoi, being Marasiana alongside other uh, partners who are there has a huge meaning and an impact that is positively uh, for the community and for the wildlife and environmental um, uh, protection. You know, in places like this, charcoal can be a factor. People will come cut trees, they use for logging, they use for uh, sand harvesting, and many, many other illegal activities. But our presence there has a huge meaning. Your support to this conservancy, your support to our camp, Marasiana, will bring a lot of beneficial to the community as well as it brings a lot of beneficial to the wildlife that matters to you and the rest of the children of the world. Next slide. Yeah, so this is who we are. And I have given you my views of why you should consider us. Come and visit Marasiana. Come and request Jackson Loseya, Salash Morumbi as your guide, Fred 
uh, Ronco as your guide. We are the professional, we are the people who actually started this um, as the very first Maasai guides ever to start uh, guiding in the Maya. In fact, I've been considered as the very first guide ever to start um, um, guiding and training. That's why we started the guided school so that you know, the Maasai people can have a share of conservation and wildlife. I would say, if you have any question, you need to ask. Ask us through our uh, reservation, and also you can ask through uh, emerging destinations. You can see the email the addresses that are there. And anytime you have any other uh, critical questions about what, what about the food, what about the guiding, what about the vehicle, what about the weather, what about times of migrations and so on, please ask anything. I am there as a professional and assure you that whatever that is difficult, I will find out an answer. I don't know everything, but I know pretty much a lot. Thank you. And I will, will now send you back to, um, to Jenny, if you, uh, Jenna, if you have any other additional things to add on to this webinar. Otherwise, I have thoroughly enjoyed meeting you all, all over the world. Whatever you are watching, I am with you and please come visit and welcome home. Thank you so much, Jackson. You are a complete wealth of knowledge. I was trying to figure out um, a question that I personally could ask so that you could uh, tell that last little bit of information about your, your guiding um, expertise in history, et cetera, and um, involvement with the camp. So that's wonderful. Um, and I myself actually get to come and visit uh, Marciana in really just a few weeks here now so i'm very much looking forward to experiencing it firsthand so please um if you do have any questions once i return home from my trip i will be back mid-november uh, please feel free to reach out and hear um, about my experience at the camp as well and it'll be my first time meeting jackson in person too so very much so looking forward to that um as jackson said if you have any questions now would be the time to type them through and then we can uh, start asking um, him these questions. Uh, my, actually, Jackson, you did already answer one of them, which was, are you currently guiding at the camp? Yes, I have um, answered that is because I have another involvement and uh, I would be on request if you send a request of me to guide your groups, you have to ask uh, Jenna or ask um, reservations and they will book my time. Because um, I have to tell you that I'm a very, very highly requested guide uh, in the Mara. Therefore, it can be a, quite a jump up. And please don't be disappointed if I give you any of our specialists, such as Fred or Salaj. They are equally fantastic. I have trained myself and certified them to be the best. And they are really the best. Perfect. Um, so. I know you talked a little bit about uh, the Conservancy being quite new. Um, when exactly did the camp itself open? When were you able to start taking guests in? Uh, the Conservancy is about, uh, since we had established about a year now, uh, and that's when we, our presence has started about a year. And But we started building our camp and it's opened uh, last June. And we started taking a few groups from June and uh, as you know, trials. And then now we have proper guests coming through and uh, through ne next week and uh, next month uh, throughout. Now we have we have a few bookings that are starting now to roll in, which is really exciting and fantastic. Therefore, yes, so in June, we are now operational. Please come. Which I, and I think that's important to note because we still have availability for next year for the high season. So if you do have anybody looking to to visit Kenya, I know that can always be a struggle um, at this point in the year. So please reach out to either myself or reservations if you do have anybody interested in staying next year during the high season. Um, I think that's, if there's no other questions that come through, I think we've answered everything now. Oh, there's one more, sorry. Um, for the conservancy, what are the the costs or the rates associated per day um, when when staying in Marasiana? Uh, we are charging at the moment uh, for the clients about twelve fifty. That's including everything, uh, one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. That is including your accommodation, your park fees, or conservation fee. That's everything. Right. If somebody wants to go into the national reserve, there is an additional, and this is so important to note 
but as from next year the additional will be from january to june it is a hundred dollars to get into the national reserve and from J July to December, it will be $200 per person to go into the National Reserve. It's that additional that people uh, or will have to pay if they say we would include one day or two days into the game reserve. And my suggestion is if you need a combination of any other, please let Jenna know, Jen know, and our reservation know that you would like to combine uh marasiana with any of our, our affiliated camps or partners uh, that they, they will recommend please do let let me know so that there is no any other confusion about that the reason why i say that because you guys are googling about jackson losea and you might, another camp might appear under my name as well because i'm still associated with another company so i think that is something right and so um, I know that you might have a biased uh, answer for this question, but what would you suggest as being the average length of stay for guests staying at the Marasiana camp? Um, my honest um, answer is if guests are highly photographic, people who are active want to do photography, I would say three nights to four nights at Marasiana. And it, let's be specific if they say we want cats, we want, uh, but because a lot of people say cats is very photogenic. And in fact, there's a lot of very photogenic other animals uh, that are there. I would say in also seasonal, we have this migration, this group of wildebeest that do not migrate. The migration is already gone to the Serengeti all the way to Ndutu to Carve. We have our own wildebeest from January to end of March carving there. So when people want to see, babies that are being born on daily basis that is mm -hmm. an additional uh, positive thing that i would say i would say three to four nights is is a comfortable for any guest to be in, in marasiana perfect okay well i think that's all that we have now uh, for today but thank you jackson so much for sharing all of your your knowledge and passion about um the camp and the area and the animals and the communities, et cetera. I guess that list could keep going on. Thank you so much for sharing with everyone today. Um, as he mentioned, and I know I've mentioned already, but if you do have any questions, you can email myself. Um, and if you want to ask uh, Jackson specifically, I can always um, do an introduction and loop him into the conversation as well. Um, if you want to book, you see the reservations email up on your screen, or if you're already booking through an operator or a DMC in Kenya, um, I'm sure we can also offer a camp through them. So up to you how you'd prefer. Um, but thank you so much. And hopefully you'll be hearing more about Mara Siena in a couple months once I'm back and uh, giving you my own personal experience at the camp. So thank you so much. And thanks, Jackson. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Uh, looking forward to host your guests and host you in person. Bye-bye.